everyone. Welcome to the tutorial.、Um, in this tutorial, we will discuss、uh, color. This is a relatively simple, but I feel is very useful, especially you want to have a good presentation、uh, for your data. So this、uh, is the outline of、uh, the tutorial series. So the first, I will discuss、uh, how to make a customized color by RGB value. And then is、um, go to discuss the built-in color in root. So in the root provide a lot of colors.、Uh, basically, you have fifty colors, fifteen named colors, and a color wheel. And you basically you have a lot of choice. But sometimes you will round up a color, or you want to make a, a more fancier presentation, you can use a customized color. Then I think the third one is、uh, a little bit challenge. It would discuss the contour.、Uh, for example, you want to set different label of、uh, for your contour plot.、Uh, my default is twenty labels. For example, you just want to use four la layers.、Um, it's okay. And sometimes you don't want to equally divide it、uh, contour. So you can、uh, set your own、uh, contour as well, and also your、uh, palette. Okay, and in the end of this tutorial, I'll give you a, a real world application, and it is、uh, fairly simple. It just load the data, and I already prepared data for you. And、um, this data is、uh, pickled、uh, in a new data pickled. Okay,、uh, by the way, because I feel like、um, the Pyro syntax is、uh, relatively easy than the、uh, original Sanru syntax, so. Uh, except the first script, I use、uh, a lot of PyRoot for the demonstration. But basically, the syntax are very similar. You 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 can understand.、Uh, you can translate them very fairly easy. Okay, so this is outline. Let's get to the first、uh, script. So let's see the first、uh, example or first demonstration. Uh, the first demonstration is the customized color, and basically is just teach you how to use the RGB、uh, color setting here. Okay, so uh, basically uh, the RGB uh, represents red, green, and blue, and it range basically from zero to two hundred and fifty five, and and but unfortunately in the root is using different range value is from the zero to one. So basically, you just need to divide every RGB in、uh, by the two fifty five. Okay, so it will、uh, just translate to normal RGB value to the root、uh, RGB value here. Okay, so、uh, in order to use your new color, you have to find a free index、um, to register the color. So the first Is to okay to create array.、Uh, this is an array with three value integer value. Is one represents to R and G and V. Then you need to find a free index. The free index can be found by the T color、uh, static function、uh, called get free color index here. So you get an index, you get RG value. So you can use the、uh, the T colors constructor to create、uh, your color.、Uh, so it it takes some、uh, some arguments. So the first argument is the free index, then the RGV value, and this is a zero to one here. Okay. So I already compare the color. So it's really to divide just five、uh, to uh, to fifty five. Okay. So this is、uh, simply what you need to do is this is my color here, and you you reduce the my color so you can later use the my color index into、uh, in your plot. Like this example, I plot a function. You, you don't need to know、uh, what does it mean, but it just simply assign assign function. And then I set a line color to this color index, and I draw it, and it is a light、uh, blue color.、Uh, fairly simple. So two step. First, 
uh, to create your RGB, then find an index, and actually it's three, and create an object, T color object pointer, and you use the index and RGB value. And when you use the new color, just use the color index, not the color itself. Okay, fairly simple. Thank you. All right, let's see the second example. Uh, in this example, I will use uh, Pyro to demonstrate how to use uh, the basic uh, built-in color. Okay, uh, so let's see the first um, built-in color. Basically, you can see here uh, there are uh, 50 boxes and um, there are in number on it. So this number is corresponding to the color. For example, one is a black, two is a red, uh, three is green, four is a blue, and so on. So, uh, so how to see, to to show this to pop up this uh, uh, figure is uh, simply very easy. So, uh, first you create the canvas object. This is, I call the canvas one. Then um, canvas have a member function called the draw color table, and you can just uh, pop up this uh, color table with the index on it. Okay, so it's fairly easy. So you can say I want to draw a uh, color. You can uh, draw a line with color uh, three. This means uh, green, just like uh, like uh, you have a function and set line color three. Then it will be uh, green color okay and instead of using the index one two three four five something like this uh, rule also provide a name for the color for example uh, the black you can say the root k uh, black and uh, red of course is the root dot k red here and and the second uh, block here just show uh, again a box, but just a 15 box because there are just a 15 named it color. Okay, so I will demonstrate uh, how it goes. Okay, um, it look like this way here. So this is white uh, first because it's a loop, and each uh, object is a box. T box object here. I set field style equal to uh, 1001. And for each car, each box I was set to field color would be uh, he this array here. So the first will be K white and the second K black and gray, red, green, and so on. Okay, uh, fairly simple. So um, just Re repeat again. So instead of using a color index one, two, three, you can also use the root k um, black. This is one, and k uh, red is two, and so on. Okay. So let's see the final built-in color setting. It is color wheel, and I feel it's pretty interesting. It will look like this way here. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, it's a wheel, and you can say you can see the K red here is uh, point to a zero. And if you want to use the other color, you can see the relatively, uh, you can see the number relative to K red, like plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So basically, you can say K red plus four, you will get this color. K red. Uh, pl uh, minus a you get this color uh, just like here okay so how I get this uh, color well okay basically uh, you define uh, actually you just uh, use a built-in uh, method it's called T color wheel and you sorry it's, it should be a class and you draw it <laughs> then you this is a fairly simple index. Basically, you can also search online. Uh, I think in the T uh, T color reference class reference. Okay, 
And this is a very short、um, tutorial demonstration for the building color. Now, okay. Right. Let's see the third、uh, example here for the contour. Uh, so I again I use、uh, Pyroot as my、uh, demonstration, and in, besides just import root, I also have to import array here.、Uh, that's because later on I will use an array of the same object, and this is a a special thing for the Python, because the Python's array ah、uh, sorry list can have Different type of object. So,、uh, to communicate with root, you need to have an array、uh, class to store the same type of object. So you cannot store the、uh, flows integer together. But this is possible for list, but not possible for certain root the C plus plus thing to work. So this is the first thing we need to keep in mind, and、uh, then let's start from a, the just default setting here. So let's just、uh, go through the code very quickly. So first, I create a canvas object and a function. This is a two D function, and、um, uh, have the x y and the value is z. So it will represent the three D. Okay, so it's a cosine x times cosine y. The range of x is minus pi half, pi half to a plus pi half. The same for the y here. So,、uh, the minimum would be zero, and the maximum is one. Okay.、Uh, so I also set a mesh just for easy to see the function. And let's see the default. I use the surface one and Z means to show the palette. And by default, it will be equally divided the value into twenty layers.、Uh, let's just see the default here. Plot function plot is function with surface one Z.、Uh, let's see. So、uh, I place a、uh, just three. Okay, it will look like this way, and this is a mesh in a color gray here. So,、uh, what if I just want the forty? Ah,、uh, sorry. Instead of twenty layers, I just want to four layers. That that means just four colors. So it is fairly easy.、Uh, we just need to set some、uh, two lines actually. So again, we have the same. Draw command, but we say we 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 say we want the、uh, four layers. I declare a、uh, variable and labels equals four. I I I call the、uh, function the tf two function. <laughs> okay, it's very hard to say. <laughs> uh, to call invoke the set contour, and I said four. And let's see what happened. So it will be just four, one, two, three, four. Okay, good. But、uh, the question is, they are the value are still equally divided. You can see the width looks very identical. So what if you want different、uh, division? It's possible. So. Uh, you need some trick, okay? Again, we want just four color, so we put this number four. But we need a different、uh, cutting value or division here. So support, su support. We just want、uh, this、uh, kind of division. So for example, for from value zero to value point seven, we want the color one. And just by default color, the color is here, the color one, and the point seven to point eight, color two, point eight to point nine, color three, and so on. From the color four would be point nine to the infinity, or this case is one here. So I 
create an object from the array. Uh, it's just, uh, all of them are uh, D is for I believe is for double. Okay, so it's an array of the same type. So it's a uh, cutting from zero, point seven, point eight, point nine, four values. Okay, corresponding to four labels. So um, you have set set control, same the same labels, but you have different cut values. So you just add this is uh, the, uh, adding to the cut value to it. So let's see what happened. So I do this. So you see. So because color one is range from zero to zero point seven, so it is much much larger than others. Okay, so the next thing we probably want to do is change the uh, palette or use your defined color. Uh, that's fairly simple. Two ways. So first, you define your own color. Or you use uh, other uh, default, um, you know, default palette. Uh, you can choose in this in this demonstration. I create my own palette. So let's see how can I do it. So uh, first, I need to pick a color and reduce color. This is the same technique as I told you in the first. A script for the customized color. Uh, so I have to create uh, RGB colors. So I have, for example, I just want again. I want to use four layers, and I let's I pick up some color like uh, the color one equal to this RGB. I have an array, a, a, sorry, a list with with four set of RGB here. Okay. And this is my color index, uh, and this is co my colors. This is a uh, array actually. Uh, simply, it's just store to keep the T color object object to life. Uh, this is really nothing, <laughs> but just to keep object al alive is. Quite tricky. <laughs> I don't know how to say. If you don't have this line, probably this code don't work because uh, it just uh, create and in the loop it create and it forget. So I would use a uh, color to attempt to append the the object I create in this loop. Then this will alive here and just handle the memory. It doesn't really uh, have some uh, interesting thing here. Okay. So the basically the the thing we need is color index and we use the uh, t color uh, class to help us create this uh, object so that we can use the t color index okay a little bit uh, very lengthy description but basically you just uh, just need to uh, know this is my color just append this object to keep it light okay so this loop here is just to create um, a free color index and reduce the RGB uh, color set that I want. Okay, so again, I call the get free color index to get the free color index. Then I I have a list here, right? So I append it to the my color index. Okay, and then. When uh then next thing is uh, to use the constructor to create the T color, so I need a color index and RGB value. Then I append it to uh, my colors. Just keep the object alive. Okay, so basically you done everything. You did a very hard job to pick up the color to reduce it. Then I just need to create array to put my um, color index. Okay, so here I just uh, convert a list to list to array, and everything inside this array is integer. Okay, so this is my color array. So the next thing I can do is to 
uh, called the uh, G style set palette. Then set what what the palette I want. The property of palette is I have four colors because the length of color array is four because this is just four, and the four and the color index is uh, according to the get free color index here. Okay, so this is a palette. So the next thing is just copy the same code from example three. I don't need to do anything. Okay, so the uh, only thing I change is adding this, change the palette set. Okay, so let's see what happened. Okay, you see the color change and the division still keep the same for colors. Uh, color one will range from zero to point seven, and color two point seven to point A, and so on. Okay, so I think you, uh, this is the end of this uh, this tutorial. So um, I will show you another application for you. Thank you very much. Okay, so in this. Uh, Demonstration. I will show you a real world uh, example here. Uh, for example, you can see this is a nuclear charge, and this a uh, neutron number as x axis, proton number as y axis, and basically this is uh, around three thousand isotopes, and we want to plot the property across all the isotopes. For example, in this case, I plot the uh, half life and log ten half life here. So, the color is a very good tool to represent the scale. And so, let's show you. Just go through the code very quickly. Uh, how you can play around with this data set here. So, uh, uh, I use a pyroot as an example here, but basically you can use uh, any like C plus one version as well. So in this case, I have to use a Pico because uh, I store data in the Pico form. Okay, so it's a binary file. Is uh, I I call the new data Pico. I read it in a binary. So I have V here. Okay, so I, I just uh, create loaded it to the nuclear data here. And there is a block for you to view the subset of data here. I just read as two sets here because it has three thousand more than three thousand sets of data. So if you show all of them, you probably can <laughs> very overwhelming. Uh, there are several interesting data in it, uh, but here I just show you the half life. Basically, probably you have mass, binding energy, and so on and so forth. Um, here, but basically you have the atomic mass or charge number Z and half life and its unit. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how many kind of data in it, you can print all the keys. The keys is like a map. In the C plus plus the key value uh, uh, container. Okay, <laughs> so the idea is uh, I get is uh, A and Z, and I can calculate the neutron number. Neutron number just uh, A minus Z, right? And I get the n. I said neutron number equal to n and Z a proton number. So I have a histo two D histogram. I get the uh, uh, n and z, and I put the the value as the half life. So according to how much I put, I want to is darker if the half life is longer, and so on. Okay. So here I create the uh, t t h two f object uh, histogram two d with the bin type is the float type. Okay. And I arrange, uh, arrange, arrange it to uh, the x axis just from zero to one hundred eighty, 
because the neutral number, uh, actually is sometimes larger. May but we don't not we just haven't found it yet. And the proton number is from zero to one hundred and twenty, and it's uh, a bin size is one. Okay, so uh, the loop here is just filling the data and. It's not really important, but we just go through very quickly. So the x axis I say is the neutral number. So I can uh, convert the type from the stream because I read in this stream to the float type, and so I can do the minus operation. And I slightly change the position so I can have the bin center at the right place. So then I retreat the half life, and calculate the order uh, by code uh, log ten, uh, and to operate the half life in second. So I know the order in second here. So then I just feel I just say call the history and set bin content to which con which bin and its order. Okay, so. Okay, so we have data. Now we have to we have to make it pretty. So in this case, I use a default uh, palette. I use a, a grayscale one, and I invert the palette. So uh, the dark part is here. So the the white part is otherwise. Uh, you can <laughs> you can very easy to notice. Okay, so this is I already told you in the third tutorial, and then I set a cut value because I don't want equally, because the you know the lifetime is a response a lot of very large scale, so uh, I have minus fifteen to minus seven as the first uh, la la label and. Then go on and so forth. Okay, and actually this is label. Sorry, this is a division or cut value. Is the same as NNDC, and you can check that. Okay, so I have a cut value. Uh, so I convert it to uh, array object, and I set a contour. This is the same technique I use uh, in previous tutorial. And I can heavily plot it. Okay, so basically, uh, it just uh, show you kind of a review the technique of set a contour, uh, set a division, how many layer you want. All right, so this is the end of the, this tutorial series. I hope you uh, like it, and thank you so much for watching this tutorial. See you next time. Bye bye.